Hi friends, let's look at this foundation model for time series forecasting from Google Research. This model has been trained using 100 billion real world data points. And they say it showed impressive zero shot performance on variety of public benchmark data sets at different granularity levels. Now, similar to the large language models, which takes a series of tokens or words as an input to predict the next token, right? And then they include the predicted token in the input sequence to predict the second uh, token. These foundation models for forecasting also work in exactly the same way, in an autoregressive way. So they take a bunch of values and then predict the next value. Here we are not doing any fitting to our data. Okay. Uh, again, similar to LLMs, these models also can be fine-tuned on our own data sets. Now, if you are interested, uh, they have shown uh, the architecture and other details. And here uh, is the benchmarking results. Now, compared to other state-of-the-art models, uh, for example, the DPR, uh, I believe that's from Amazon, the Cat Boost, uh, etc. Uh, here we are looking at uh, the scaled MAE mean absolute error. Uh, it's scaled uh, uh, because it's benchmarked on uh, different data sets. As you can see, uh, the performance is quite uh, impressive. Now let's see how we can use uh, this model uh, in our own use cases. All right, uh, it's super easy. You need to install this Times FM foundation model, import the library, and then here I have uh, this electric production. Uh, it's a famous uh, monthly level electricity production uh, data set, uh, which is on Kaggle and uh, many other uh, sources. Okay, so here we have the data uh, starting from January 1995. And uh, I don't know the units, but in some arbitrary units, uh, maybe megawatts or something like that. Here we have uh, the actual production. Okay. Now this data set. Okay, so here we simply added a unique ID. Uh, because in time series forecasting, uh, we often forecast multiples, right? For example, we might be forecasting the price of a product for multiple um, uh, products, maybe uh, forecasting the population of multiple countries, things like that. So just uh, that ID uh, to identify uh, which time series it is, okay? So we have total 397 points. Uh, as I mentioned, these models works in an autoregressive manner. So they take a bunch of uh, series of values as an input to predict the next value. They include that predicted value in the input to predict the following value, etc. So these models also have the concept of concept con context length, meaning how many values they can take as an input. Now this model, it can take maximum of 512 values as an input. So here we are breaking the data uh, or splitting the data into train and test. So we are going to use 373 points uh, for uh, not really training the model, but as an input to the foundation model. And then we will forecast the following 24 points and we measure the accuracy of the model. All right. So uh, we instantiate the model. Now you can leave these parameters uh, as it is. Uh, these are like uh, hyperparameters uh, in a machine learning model sense. The two important ones are, as I mentioned, this context length, uh, the maximum it can take is 512. Uh, you can leave it as it is, but uh, if you want to use shorter length to predict the next value, uh, you can reduce this value. Now, horizon length, uh, this is the number of points we want to forecast into the future. Now, this library, uh, as it is from Google, it is based on uh, this uh, PyTorch slash ten, uh, TensorFlow. So you can make use of GPU if you are forecasting multiple uh, time series, uh, but otherwise uh, uh, set it to CPU, all right? And then the model is, uh, it's hosted on Hugging Face. So load the model from Hugging Face. Uh, the first time it takes some time to download the model. And then uh, this is where we are doing the actual forecasting. Okay, so forecast on data frame. We simply provide uh, the training uh, uh, training data frame and specify uh, our target variable. So here we are doing univariate time series forecasting. And in a few minutes, we will add some additional features uh, called covariates and we'll see how to do that. All right, uh, then simply make the forecast and this is our uh, uh, forecasted uh, data frame. All right, so here you will see uh, for different quantiles, uh, it shows uh, the confidence uh, or the range of the forecasts for different uh, confidence intervals. All right, and then let's see. So this is our forecast, okay? Uh, the 24 points and the forecasted values. Uh, for evaluating the model, uh, let's just define this mean squared error, mean absolute error, and root mean squared error, which simply take the predicted values along with the actual values and compute those uh, uh, standard definitions, okay? So this is our forecasted data frame with 24 values, right? So we call those three functions with the actual sign, the forecasts, and we have a standard uh, mean absolute error of about three. 
So if you plot the actual versus forecast, so this is the actual data, uh, some 380 odd points starting with 1995, uh, one point uh, every month. And then we have forecasted for the uh, for the 24 points uh, here. Uh, the forecasts are good. I mean, this is not too complex uh, time series. Uh, so mostly at these bottoms, uh, the forecast deviate uh, a bit from the actuals, but otherwise uh, uh, the forecasting uh, uh, is quite good. So it's super simple. As I mentioned, the only thing we need to do is once we have our data, we instantiate the model and two parameters are important, the context length and how many points we want to forecast into the future. Load the model from hugging phase and then do the forecast. Okay. So what we have done is univariate forecast. Now, in some cases, we might have additional features, even though it is tricky uh, because at the time of inference, we need to have the future values of all the features we have included in the model during the training, right? Which is not always easy. For example, let's say we are trying to forecast the price of a product, right? Now for the historical data, we might have the demand. So using demand as a feature, uh, we can make good uh, predictions. But in order to predict the price into the future, we need the demand in the future also, which may not always be available, right? So be careful with what features you include in time series forecasting, unlike in a machine learning model. Now, the covariates, this is just a fancy name uh, for the features. Now, broadly, we can categorize them into four types, okay? For example, let's say we are forecasting uh, this ice cream sales. So here we have the daily sales. Now we can have uh, the category. Now, as I said, we can be forecasting multiple uh, time series. So we can have a category, different categories, and what's the base price? Uh, here we have the weekday, and then uh, was there a promotion or not? and also the daily temperature. So if you observe here, we have about seven points here, okay? So we can train the model using these seven points, but when we are forecasting, let's say for the following seven points, if we want to include these features, we need their values for the following seven days as well. So that's why here you will see has promotion for the past seven days, this is the historical data, and we also know for the next seven days, which hasn't happened yet, for the future, we know what are its values. And similarly, for the daily temperature also, we know the values of the future seven days. Now, this might this itself might be a forecast. Okay, so these are called uh, these are called categorical covariates, whereas this one is called numerical covariate. Okay, and also these are dynamic ones. Whereas these two, which does not change with time, for example, the category does not change, and also the base price do not change, right? So these are called static categorical covariate static numerical covariate and here is an, another example for example we have sunscreen uh, same as this let's say we are predicting the price of both uh, this ice cream and sunscreen okay so we have the category and the base price which are fixed does not change with time but for these three dynamic features we know the values of them for the next seven days as well the weekday uh, was there a promotion or not and what's the daily temperature okay all right now for our data we have the date and we have uh, the target value, right? Now let's just derive the month using the date. Now since this data is at a monthly level, uh, we can extract month. Uh, was this a daily level? We could extract the day of the week as well. That can be another feature. Now this is a categorical variable because it has only 12 fixed values, right? So let's see how we can include additional regressors uh, in our model. Now, uh, so we are going to do, earlier we did a TFM, uh, sorry, one second, earlier we did uh, here we are, uh, yeah, so using this library, we forecasted on a data frame. Now we are going to do it slightly different because we are using uh, additional features. So we will be using this forecast with covariates. Okay. As I mentioned, we can have four types of co covariates, dynamic numerical, dynamic categorical, static numerical, static categorical as well. So for our data frame, we have only one uh, which is dynamic uh, categorical okay so we need to prepare the data in certain format so first we need to supply our historical value which is this forecast input so from our time series data we have included all the data points except the last 24 uh, for the validation purpose okay so we are using these 370 397 tokens uh, as an input and then for the covariates we need to create sort of these dictionaries uh, each element is a covariate and that should be in a list okay so it expects the input data in this particular format okay now so because we have only one covariate we have included dynamic categorical a covariate and we train the model 
and here we have the forecast and again we are we can compute the model performance now in case if you have all types of covariates uh, here is a very synthetic uh, dummy example so we have let's say two time series or we are predicting let's say the price of two products uh, so for each product we have 512 historical data points 512 and let's say we want to forecast for the following 24 points so as i mentioned for the dynamic covariates we need to know the values of those covariates into the future as well right so 512 plus 24 which is 536 so here we have created a, a dynamical numeric covariate uh, called temperature which has 536 values for the first product and 536 value for the second product okay so it's the historical values plus the number of points we want to forecast into the future okay similarly dynamic categorical so again similarly 536 536 points uh, 0 to 7 it representing the weekday and then we can have some static uh, as well right so static numerical so this is the base price of let's say product 1 10.5 the base price of, of second product 15 and finally we have static categorical covariates the first one is called uh, let's say food category second one is beverages okay uh, so exactly the same here is our historical data of uh, let's say 512 points and then here we have all the covariates okay so we forecast and here we have uh, the forecasts okay so this is the shape of the forecast because we are forecasting for two products so we have the two here and we are forecasting for 24 points into the future and then for each product uh, we just simply printed uh, the five forecasted values uh, into the future okay so this is this should follow uh, the sine uh, form uh, this will follow the cosine form okay all right uh, that's all for this video uh, i'll provide the link to this code in the description uh, uh, thank you very much